<laughs> I love some Gene Combs, but I'm I'm not feeling that Eve in the devil situation, Don. You know I love you like a brother from another mother, but you gonna have to reflect on that Eve from the devil now. Oh, well, you you said that. Repeat what you said, Don. That good food, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. That makes sense. They were a powerful family for a long time. So. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for calling. All right. 875 <clears throat> excuse me, now I know, <clears throat> is the number to call if you have comments or questions. Now, the last time you were on, you were on briefly because... Uh, I misspoke. Uh, yeah, that's all right. You said you had been banned. You said I was banned from jams. Yeah, uh huh. So now, what, what what sparked that though? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I don't know, cause you so, said it. I was I. Yeah, I, but I think when I almost was, choked. It, it was something that had happened when you were on. Um, I don't know if there was some ex an exchange, I, and I was getting all this secondhand information uh, hmm. in exchange. Um, that uh, that you had either with someone on the air or something that you said about. Mayor Melton or something that sparked that whole... Um, oh, I'm not sure. I know we had a caller that called in and had a lot of things to say. I tried to limit my um, banter and my conversation to the council. I don't think what I did sparked anything mm. from what I understood from Scott Alexander. Mm -hmm. um, so... I really don't understand that one because when they I spoke with rumors yeah rumors, rumors. yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm wondering where you got it from. It's fake news. <laughs> the epitome of I fake news. Twitter, huh? Yeah, and you know that's what I've learned in Selma. You know, people come to me with a lot of stuff, and I do filter it out. Even though I'm not as grand as Randy, and I don't have a, a radio station to speak on every day, but I do think it's it's very um, it's, it's up to us to come out with the correct information sometimes because it can hurt people. You know. Um, and I, I get a lot of stuff sometimes. People, oh, this person got fired, sunshine, and this person is sleeping with this person, sunshine. And I don't speak on a lot of it because I can't put my finger on it. Now, if I could put my finger on it and get some smoke and make sure there's a fire coming, I'll speak on it. But we have to be careful. But, you know, after I spoke with um, the, the Scott, you know, when Scott comes out, he's the big dog, you know what I mean? And they are such a, a wonderful group of people. I would hate to ever offend um, any one of them, you know. So I just... And I've done work with them. Me and Gene Heisel held a show back here in 2012. I think we did a, a campaign um, forum when it was a county election. Mm -hmm. So I, And I had two shows with them, um, I2 and America, and um, Keeping It Real with Sunshine Alvarado. So I would hate to ruin any yeah, reputation. I don't, I don't remember where that came from. I'd have to go back and, and study. Well, I know something was up with Salam. I know that was an issue. Right. But me and Salam were on two different factors and I don't think I spoke of the mayor in a way that Salam did um, and I tried to be fair because I supported the mayor and like I said to people people think that because we have to get out of not speaking truth to people that we love or like or care for you know you still have to be honest to the people he's an elected person and if I speak um, the truth is just the truth and I in that in that particular instance and I, um, I was aware of Paul Alexander was having some issues with political rhetoric because the city does pay for time over at jams um so i tried my best to stay positive i answered the questions that were posed to me um i probably wouldn't have mentioned some of those things if the questions weren't posed but i'm going to answer whatever you ask and from the response that i received from that day from council members and regular citizens i had one of my fans go out and get a, a radio who said she's been in her car for every time they say I'm on the radio, she jumps in her car and she went and got an AM radio. So I hope she's listening this morning. I told her I'll be on your show. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. You know, you and what I heard was that the mayor called and complained. You know, so that might be a personal issue with him and the host of the show because they've had issues. Um, and um, but everyone I talked to had a positive outlook. Even some of that my political adversaries even had a political a positive outlook on the show. Um, white and black. So I'm I'm not sure, but. You know, when some when some people call in crying, I don't know, but I don't think it had anything to do with me based on the conversation I had with Scott. Um, and I, I didn't speak with Paul the second time, but once you speak to Scott, you really don't need to talk to Paul. Okay, I'll have viewpoint you on the air. Good morning. Uh, good morning, how are you? I'm good. 
So I'm saying, is it going to? Uh, how do you? How, how is that going to proceed this year? Well, I don't have the program with me. Maybe Councilman Benjamin will call me in. And, and I saw Councilwoman Benjamin yesterday. Meant to meant to interview her, but by the time I looked around, I think either she was gone or I just missed her. Mm -hmm. But busy lately. Does she have a Does she have a son that's playing, or some a relative playing in the um, on that championship team, huh? Okay. I think so. Out of town for a while, but I don't know what's going on with that. But anyway, tomorrow starts the youth conference. And what time is it? Uh, she will call you and give you all the information. Okay, tell her to get in touch or to text me or to or email me. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. And I'm glad that she brought up Angela Benjamin's name because um, on last on that program on Terry's show. I, I connected with council persons to get the information I received because when I got to the council meeting that day, it was gone. It was empty. I was like, did y'all even have a meeting? Mm. Um, and so being that I was supposed to be on jams as the political analyst to talk about the council meeting and break it down to the citizens, right. I didn't know what to talk about. So by the grace of God, I said, well, that's good. So I can't input my own information. So I called, um, Councilman President Bowie, I called um, Councilwoman Benjamin, and um, I called Janie Thomas because I knew she was working on a couple of projects in her community with the streets and the sewers, and I just wanted to talk about it, and I loved her, her garden. So when I spoke with the people that I spoke with, that information that happened at City Council came from direct um, input. Hey, so me, Let me ask you this, because you know, I've been kind of going through, you know, sifting through, in my own mind, just to make, because I like to be right. I don't like to be even if I'm on the wrong side of history, I, oh, I, don't, I don't mind either. You know, but I want to Conviction. Sure I'm right. That's I'm right. right. That's right. So mm -hmm. now, so what's your take, and how do you feel about? Do you think is it important that the mayor shows up at a city council meeting on a regular basis? I think it's very important. I think um, that's what he campaigned on, and I think that's why that's what he campaigned on that he was going to be open and transparent, mm -hmm. and he has not been. You know, I and you know, I was I was a diehard. You and I both campaigned for George Evans twice, and when when I jumped ship, I jumped ship for real reasons, right. not superficial reasons. So when Dario Melton called me, I didn't come because I had said to myself after George, I was not helping anyone run for mayor. Mm -hmm. Dorita West Clay Browning um, Strong, what's her name now? Clay. Um, she had a lot of last names, and Adrian from the Selma High School, they called me. <laughs> Dario called me and sat me down. His mother sat me down. <laughs> Kamisha, we know you know how to run a campaign. They asked me for, I told them, I ain't going to give y'all my information. I got to pay me. <laughs> but I will tell you what you need to do. You got to galvanize. You got to get out there. You got to touch hands. You got to shake hands. <laughs> you know, so when they came to me, I explained the situations I had and why I couldn't support the current administration, and I was looking for someone that I could support, and that's how I became. I came became on that team, and I just wish I'd have kept my sec my first mind and not joined anybody's team. Mm -hmm. um, but as we went along, me and Dario kept in communication throughout the entire election. Um, he even mentioned my name in his oh, campaign victory speech. You know, so um, when I came to him with uh, issues about my property that I own, that I had issues with George Evans, and um, Attorney Nunn can attest to that, that I've been dealing with that since 2012, mm -hmm. um, he kept directing me to the department heads. And see, I've been to every department head in Selma when Evans was in office. Mm -hmm. So the only new department heads I needed to talk to was the new ones that Dario appointed, which was Chief Collier. And um, Van Diver, but they were too good to set an appointment. You had his secretary hanging up the phone. You know, when you call up there, I, I think she's really rude and unprofessional. Maybe that's why George Evans got rid of her. Um, it's just a lot of things that just 
don't sit well with not just me, with the people. Because I tried to be quiet because I hate when my candidate looks a fool. I really hate that. Well, it goes deeper than a candidate. You know, um, those of us who um, have been politically involved, and I, I got back, and I am like you, I almost, I really didn't have any intention, mm. you know, of getting back involved, but I, I was concerned about the future uh, and which way we're headed. And so, uh, and even though I did not support uh, Daryl Melton, I was hopeful once he won mm -hmm. that it, well, after I listened to his speech, right. <laughs> I said, well, and if he does what he says, the pearly he gates came. Yeah, then we're straight. You know? <laughs> it didn't happen. But unfortunately, and I, and I, again, I said yesterday, you know, I, um, I didn't, uh, I didn't the day after he was elected, I didn't get on and jump on him like some of the, some of the other talking heads. Mm -hmm. And you weren't on his campaign. You could have, right. you oh, could have. Oh, my Lord. I mean, they don't have any eyes. Nobody's really seen how bad I can really get. You know what I mean? If I really wanted to dog a person, mm -hmm. you know. But that's not my style. Right. And I didn't do it after, I didn't do 90 days. Didn't do 100 mm -hmm. days. I said I would wait until June. Mm -hmm. And even gave a little leeway then. But my last, my last straw was this past week. With mm. the young people doing the slow, that they ended up having to do the slow ride, right. uh, say the south side. Mm. Anytime you have uh, a group of young people yeah. who are stepping up to the plate and who are trying to address crime uh, in the community, and they get to run around, and you're supposed to be trying to stop and prevent crime. And our police are taking over. That, aren't we under police jurisdiction over there? Well, that's what I'm saying. What I mean about, you know, once they told me what had happened, that kind of really, you know, made me, that just said, okay, all right, mm -hmm. enough is enough. And I mean, that was after the mayor didn't show up for the, Channel 8. Eight. Oh, that's what I, I wanted to talk about today. Oh, my goodness. To, 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 to I even showed up hands. for WAKA. I was so happy to see them. Like, yeah. you know, I gave. I didn't even get a chance to say, oh, I'm Sunshine with Sunshine Media Group. And I, was my I didn't do any of that. I just was like, oh, I love you guys. And gave, I was like a groupie, yeah. you know, so... I like I saw I saw Cheryl Smetley down there. She's always looking good, always in a nice little suit, always pretty. I saw I said, Well, Cheryl, where's the party? Yeah. You know, because that's what I expected. I expected the Selma. They've announced this on the news for weeks. Mm -hmm. I've watched Watumka. We've watched uh, Ops. We, I mean, it was so many little cities that we yeah. they and they all presented something yeah. that gave this the the viewers a taste of their city. Public relations. <sighs> now maybe I'm did he wrong. hired the lady for that, didn't he? Well, you know, maybe I'm Beth, wrong. Maybe what public you doing, relations Beth? has no value. I don't know, Beth. You know, you know hey, let me let me go back to the, let me go back to that public relations position. You know, when this is when me and Dario Melton fell out. After I had my baby, you know, I was incapacitated for a minute. You know, you got to get your body right, feed your baby, and get them all. I don't all. know how you guys do it. I don't, I don't know either. I had a stomach virus. I Ooh. said, no, I'm good. I'm not a woman. You're not. <laughs> the Lord. Now, I don't know, Don. You might be right, but the men might be the devil. Whoever made us have these babies might be. But I'm just going <laughs> to Forgive me, Lord. That might be sacrilegious. Lord, forgive me. I ain't trying to go to hell. Lord, forgive me. I have to catch myself. But anyway, but, you know, I went to a couple of meetings. He, he I mean, I. He kept calling me to these meetings. Oh, Sunshine. I said, well, you know, Mayor, you know, I really have this vision for the cable access channel. Mm -hmm. All you guys ever promote is the movie theater and council. There's so much more to Selma. Totally unutilized. Right. So I said, you know, if you want to help me, like I helped you, mm -hmm. I don't want you to give me anything. Right. Let me be work on that. Give me that contract. Mm -hmm. I asked for $500 stipend a month. Mm -hmm. My son is a student at Troy University. A broadcast journalism major. Mm -hmm. His girlfriend is also. Mm -hmm. I was going to have them use that as a platform to help. Let me see if they are learning anything yeah, with all that money we some, spend. Give them some experience and at the same time be able to help okay. the market to change. All right, because he begged my son to change his address from Troy to vote from a student. You know, so it's just stuff like that that you can't help. So when you go back, and he says, no, Kamisha, I have something even better for you. He said, I have something even better for you. I said, well, Dario, I have to be careful because, you know, I have a little baby. I don't want to be too stressed out, yada, yada, yada. I need at least six months before I get jumped into anything with a, a young one. So he said, no, you know, you've been having issues with complaints in, in the city. And that was my main concern. Where do complaints go? Um, that was my complaint with, issue with George. And he said, so I'm going to make you over complaint division. I said, oh, wait a minute. I don't know. <laughs> Sunshine, a little firecracker. More stress. But, right. I said, but you know what? I think I'll be good at that because I understand when you have a true complaint and no one returns your call from the mayor, from the department head. I even had one girl up there with um, uh, code enforcement 
hang up the phone on me. I had caught her on video a couple of years ago. So as time moves on, okay, well, that might be a good place for me. So in other words, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Okay, he said the budget. He kept bringing up this budget, the same budget that Miss Chestnut. And then you know what? Somebody called me in December and said, Sunshine, Daryl ain't going to hire you. you know, these folks rub salt in your wound now. <laughs> This is Selma, Alabama. They were, were upset. I said, well, I ain't asked for no job. So now me and this person's arguing about something that we shouldn't even be arguing about. Right. Said, so I was like, I didn't ask Dario for a job. I asked for the cable access channel. with child, he lying to you, and you stupid to believe. And when somebody called Sunshine stupid, I get, I can look, what? Oh. So I had to rethink. So I called him. Mayor, you ain't playing me now, are you? I said, because I will, hey, I will, I'm giving you this out. If you're not going to give me this job, because I like to get people out, mm -hmm. you know, just go ahead and be honest. If that's not going to be happening, it's not feasible, tell me now. He invited me to another meeting. That's when I met Beth. I said, oh, okay. And Beth was like, great, great, great. Call me, call me. Great, wonderful, wonderful. And yeah, and you know, and you're going to be like my sidekick. And I said, oh, well, okay, fine. You know, I'm, I'm in it to win it. And I said, well, don't be cocky, Kamisha, because I can be a little cocky sometimes. So I said, you know what? I wanted to do the cable channel, but this is just as good. I can, it's efficient. It's something that I can help the people, and I love helping people. So I don't mind doing a complaint. My aunt died, went to New York, came back. The February budget was passed. I never heard nothing from the mayor, but by then, I got a call, and the doctor told me I had cancer. I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't. But thank God, since then, I've been healed. And, you know, so I called the mayor in a month, like a, a week before my surgery. He assured me once again. That he had my back. And I got you, Sunshine, don't worry. He saw me at Dollar General. Sunshine, don't worry. I said, okay, man, I'm going to take your word. And, you know, we were also friends from, well, I ain't going to say friends, acquaintances. Because we were also in Leadership Dallas, um, Leadership Selma, Class 16. Hey, sweet 16 out there. There's a lot of us out there. Angela Benjamin, Dwayne Alday, Mayor Melton. Um, um, a lot of us, um, Sarah Youngblood. Um, there's a lot of young people that are really active in the community today. And, um, you know, so we built a relationship through that professionally. So, you know, I, I trusted him professionally, not just even as a, a pastor, but just because there's no reason for you to lie to me, you know. And um, I went to court for an issue and I, I, I had another complaint. I had another complaint that went nowhere. So I said, well, I need to see with the chief of police and maybe this would be some. Well, grant them. The, the, the sheriff Grantham. That's well. He's he's running for sheriff. Yeah, he's running. For yeah, sheriff. I think I like him. I don't know. Depending on who's running, but um, he's always been a, a upstanding guy. And every time I've seen him, he's always given me good information. And he gave me good information that day. He said, "Well, Kamisha, these police reports were written wrong, and they should have never been written this way." And that's my issue. That was another issue with the cell in the police department. Who? What are the the, the, what are the rules for writing police reports? Because they just write what they want to write on these reports sometimes. And, and that's an issue because you got a, a court. It becomes an issue if you go through the legal process. <laughs> yes. Because I had an accident. And I'm so glad I had it now because I went through the process. And I, had, I got firsthand um, experience with how prejudice can come into play. Yes. Although I never talked about it, and I'm not going to get into detail now, but what it did for me was it gave, now I got a bird's eye view. That's yes. why a lot of times I'm glad when people don't know who I am. Uh -huh. You know, I said I want you to mess up with me like you do anybody else. Oh, and that's what if I decide to, I can. And that's my passion, so Randy. That's what because I'm, about. I'm not a dummy. I'm not a dumb person. I think I'm I'm I'm, I'm intellectual. I'm, I'm highly educated, and I've been everywhere. And when people try to pull the wool over my eyes, it hurts me because there's a lot of uneducated people here in this town. So and if they don't know, know any, what they're doing to people who are, honor, who are not as informed as you are, and who are certainly not as literate. And I can't. I hate. I, Ooh, hate, I hate a bully. I hate a bully. Every fight I've had in my life has been with a bully. It meets and mine. Thank God. I, I, well, I think I won them all except one was a tie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got beat up by a bully one time, but she oh, said I never had nobody fight me back, so it was a blessing. She said I never had nobody fight me back, so we became friends. Well, so what? you always I, have to fight back. I've never had a bully ever come back after the first one. That's it. They all, they they all, all decided to respect. Yeah, it's respect. All respect after that's that, right. You know. And that's my passion. And that's how I got into this role that I'm in Selma now because, wow, really? You know, when somebody tries you and you know better, mm -hmm. imagine people that don't know better. And, that, and that's what bothers me. Let's take a couple of calls. And then I, and then I want to dissect this whole political situation and, and, and say, are, are we being um, 
uh, are we expecting too much when you go out and you, and you give your heart and you give your time and, you, and you, your feet are sore and you sweat and almost at heat stroke to go out for these candidates to help them get elected and when they get elected they turn your back they turn their back on you? Is it wrong to expect something in return? Is that unethical? You know, I, I think mean, it is unethical to think that you should get something in return. Um, but when they sit with you and you have a discussion and they offer you something, mm -hmm. it becomes unethical when they don't stand they by their word. Right, because I've never asked any them. candidate for anything. I've never asked George Evans for a job. People have asked George Evans to give me a job. Mm -hmm. But he's never given me one. He's given me to run around on the job. And I've never um, asked anyone for I've never asked. I don't ask people for jobs. I, to. I never had to. <laughs> um, when I moved to Alabama, the last job I had before I came here was paying $25 an hour. And I have yet have, you know, I'd rather fry chicken than work for some of the wages that you guys give. <laughs> but what I'm saying is I don't have to beg for a job. Without a job, I've, I've purchased a property, a home. I I've, think I've, people are making too much money. I think <laughs> the money's going to the head. Ain't enough out here, really. Certain, a little bit of people are making too I much money. About, yeah. You know, they, they don't know that the money that gone to the head that means that something is missing. Mm. Uh, viewpoint you on there. Are you there, Carla? Brandy. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Sorry it took so long, but thank you for waiting. Yeah, Brandon. This is uh, Bruce. Uh, is that Bruce Holmes? Yeah, yeah. What's going on? You know what? I just got uh, this morning newspaper ran, and I want to congratulate the Little League World Series champions. Did you find yeah, it? Well, you, uh, yeah, well, and go on, 